Hey everyone, this is the Rewriter Writing In. For today's video, I wanted to take a suggestion from the comments section of my last video and write the story of Sam Raimi's supposed Spider-Man 4. As cheesy as those movies were sometimes, in my eyes, this series of films are classics, and I love each of them for different reasons. As well, Tobey Maguire, in an interview after Spider-Man 3 came out, was talking about the beginnings of Spider-Man 4 and how Raimi was discussing the plot with him. It seemed like this movie was going to be made, until Sony decided to reboot the franchise for some reason that I still don't really understand. Now before I get into the story, I do want to say uh, I apologize for the sidebar as well as for the not so great uh, looking video quality. I am still trying to figure out how to use Twitch on PlayStation 4 as I usually stream on Xbox, so please forgive me uh, for those. So with all that being said, and with that long introduction out of the way, let's dive into the unwritten story of Spider-Man 4. The story begins five years after the events of Spider-Man 3, with Peter, MJ, and others gathering around the grave of Aunt May, as she had just passed away. Her tombstone lied next to Uncle Ben's, with writing on it that explained that she was a loving aunt and wife, but also a loving mother. After the pastor made his speech, Peter began to speak, talking about how she had been his mother for so many years and that she always protected him and had his best interests at heart. However, he is happy that she is now reunited with Uncle Ben and is so proud that he was able to be raised by her and that he would not be the man he is today if it weren't for her and Uncle Ben. After the service ended, Peter and MJ got back into their car and drove back home. As their car is pulling up, it is revealed that their home is Aunt May and Uncle Ben's old house. As well, Peter and MJ are married, with MJ being pregnant with their son. When they get home, Peter makes MJ a simple dinner, and they begin to reminisce about their old high school days, laughing about how simple and easy those times were, and yet they thought at that time that those were the toughest years. However, the laughter then turns back to sadness as they remember Harry and how great of a friend he was back then and that he didn't deserve what happened to him. However, MJ reassures Peter that the two of them had become better people due to all the tragedy that they have endured. The next morning, MJ makes Peter breakfast, and then Peter heads out to the Daily Bugle, to which he is now the boss, and had taken over for J. Jonah Jameson after he retired. As he walks into his office, Betty Brant greets him, and informs him that the Shocker was spotted in Times Square, and that if they hurry, they can catch Spider-Man taking him down. She says this, wanting the bugle to get the first scoop, of course, but also because she is a trusted ally of Peter's and knows that he is Spider-Man. He thanks her and explains to the office that he had a business meeting he needed to attend to and that Miss Brandt would hold down the fort until he returned. Editors and writers in the office are confused as he had just walked in and now was already leaving but they just shook their heads as this was typical Peter behavior. Peter then heads to the roof where he stashes his suit and jumps off the top of the bugle, swinging towards Times Square. Once he gets there, Shocker is seen shooting out sound wave blasts from his gauntlets that are throwing police and civilian cars around like they were made of paper. Spidey swings on the top of a streetlight and quips how Shocker should really be taking his anger out on plushies and not on cars. Shocker yells at Spider-Man, screaming that he'll never be able to stop him with the new tech he has. Spidey remarks that it's new tech, but same old tricks. Spidey jumps down, sending his foot towards Shocker's head, but Shocker slams his gauntlets on the ground, sending a shockwave that sent Spidey flying in the air. Okay, he did pick up a new trick or two, Spidey remarked, scratching his head. However, this didn't stop him, and he began to shoot his webs at Shocker's gauntlets, attempting to malfunction them which didn't work as the webbing kept falling off of them. Shocker laughed, thinking he had finally outsmarted the spider. However, Spidey then noticed that his gauntlets were emanating a lot of heat and that he could see the steam forming above them. Spidey then shouted at him that his aim was still terrible and that he couldn't hit the broadside of a barn with those things. Shocker's anger increased as he began sending wave after wave of sound blasts toward Spider-Man, who was swinging in circles around him. His gauntlets then began turning red, and Shocker yelled in pain, throwing them off of him, 
before getting kicked in the face, toppling to the ground. Spidey exclaims that he knew he had terrible aim, before webbing him up and leaving him for the police. As Spidey is swinging away, he shoots a web at a corner of a building, retrieving his camera. Once he got back to the bugle, Betty winked at Peter and remarked that Spidey had done it again. With a smile, Peter handed her the camera to develop the pictures and went back to his office to finish the rest of his work for the day. When Peter got home, he noticed that MJ was having trouble walking and that she was in a lot of labor pains. Peter ran to help her, sitting her down and giving her some painkillers to help her. MJ thanked him and told him that they had been getting worse. Peter told her to hold on for just a few more weeks or so and then she'd be ready. MJ kissed Peter on the cheek and knew that he would always be there to look out for her. MJ then asked how his day went, with Peter answering that it was just a typical day for the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, and took Shocker off the streets. MJ laughs and asks how that guy still thinks he's the greatest criminal mastermind. Peter laughs as well, saying that he had one too many screws loose in his head. The following week, a writer at the Bugle talked with Peter in his office, explaining that there were a number of criminals located in East Manhattan, but that they were all taken out, with Spider-Man nowhere in sight. Peter thanked him for the tip and went out to investigate the scene. Peter followed the trail of police cars lining down the street and pulled off near the crime scene. Once he had got to the scene, he pulled out his camera and saw that Rhino, Vulture, and Scorpion had all been badly injured. Rhino was on the ground, with his horn wedged in his leg, Scorpion with his tail wrapped around his neck, and Vulture strung up by his wings. As well, there was a coded message written above them, but it was in some foreign language. Peter took the pictures and then went back to the bugle. Back at the bugle, Peter was surrounded by Betty and his top writers and editors. Peter speaks that this was obviously not Spider-Man's doing, but that it would take considerable strength to take down these enemies, as they are some of Spider-Man's toughest villains. One of the editors points out that the message was written with Russian letters and numbers, forming a phrase as a code. He asks Peter to hand him the image, and he would attempt to translate it for them. After an hour or so, the editors come back into the office, stating that the sequence was an old form of coded communication used by the Russians during the Cold War. He then translates the message. I have hunted and defeated his fiercest foes. Now I seek the best. I hunt for Spider-Man. Peter and Betty sit back, wondering why someone would use Cold War era codes to communicate this message. Peter remarks that whoever it is, they are highly trained and dangerous, and warned them not to go chasing this lead, that he would figure it out. Before Peter leaves, Betty whispers for him to be careful, as this person was unlike anyone he had ever faced before. Back at home, Peter explains the odd situation that transpired that day, and asks if MJ had any idea who would use a code like that. MJ sat back for a moment, thinking about it. She then began to remember when she used to be an actor. One of the roles she played was of a damsel in distress during that era, and that she had to research the role and time period. She goes on to say that her research led down a particular rabbit hole, where she discovered a covert KGB spy slash assassin, codenamed Craven, that was on the CIA's most wanted list but had vanished after the Cold War ended. Peter then asks her to bring up the information again. She explains that she would do it, but that they would have to access the dark web. Peter explained to her that he was used to being in the web, to which she chuckled and attempted to access the information again. After a period of time, she finally was able to access open CIA records from 1984, which detailed accounts of a Russian spy infiltrating compounds and taking out high-ranking officials. However, they were never able to track him down again, and he was lost forever, until now it seemed. MJ asked Peter if he had ever encountered someone like this, to which he replied that this was all new to him. MJ then makes the connection that he must be obsessed with hunting high-profile targets and sees Spider-Man as his ultimate goal. Peter then sits back confused, wondering how a 50-60 to 60 year old person was still able to fight let alone take down his strongest enemies. MJ warns Peter to be on his guard, to which he remarks that he will, but that he won't cower while this maniac was out there. After contemplating it for a minute, and thanking MJ in the process, Peter remarked that Oscorp was still in operation, 
and that there is a chance that the serum that Norman took all those years ago might still be there, albeit altered or enhanced. Peter knew that Oscorp would be a good starting place for his investigations. Peter then kisses MJ before heading out to Oscorp. Peter swings through the nighttime city, past lit up skyscrapers and neon lights as he makes his way toward the neon green covered tower of Oscorp. Peter crawls on the glass walls of the tower until he spots a research wing that deals with serums and chemical compounds. Peter finds the nearest vent and sneaks his way into the facility before dropping down. He finds a computer and begins to access their files on the serums being created. He then sees a serum consisting of traces of steroids, andro, and some unknown chemicals that are unidentifiable. Peter then notices the shipments of the drugs are being shipped out to a compound in Primorsky Krai in Russia. Peter knew that the KGB assassin was using this serum and determined to shut it down. Peter then hears a roar behind him and turns around to see a massive lion and a giant Russian man wearing a lion pelt and holding a rifle to his head. The man then speaks with a heavy Russian accent that he must be the so-called Spider-Man, but that he is so small and pathetic. Peter then nervously quips that he hasn't hit in the gym in a while, but that he would get back on it. The man then whistles for the lion to attack, to which the lion lunges at him, almost biting off Spidey's head, but he ducked and threw the lion back against the wall. Spidey then swung at Craven, but he dodged with animal-like speed and punched him so hard that he flew through two walls. Spidey gets back up, dazed at how an old man was able to move like a lion and punch like a freight train, let alone looking like he was only in his early 30s. Before Peter could process any further, Craven grabbed him and took out his knife, stabbing him in the rib. Peter dropped to the ground, losing consciousness, but still got back up to fight. However, before he was able to fight any longer, he realized that he had been poisoned because his whole body was shutting down. As his eyesight fades to black, Craven grabs him by the leg, dragging him away. Peter then wakes up to find himself inside of a castle, tied to a large chair in front of a banquet table. He looks up to see Craven eating a massive meal, to which when Craven notices that he is awake, he begins talking to him. Craven explains that he is in Castle Kravinoff, the home of his ancestors. Peter then asks why he let him live, to which Craven explains that it would have been dishonorable to kill him in cold blood without a proper duel and that it was necessary that they fight properly, so that the lineage of the Kravinovs is one of nobility and honor. He continues to say that he has never found a worthy adversary to face, but when he had heard that Spider-Man was the protector of New York, he knew that this would be his defining duel. If he could best the Spider-Man, then he would be accomplished as the world's greatest hunter. Spider-Man remarks that he is a madman, and that he will put an end to this hunt. Craven laughed, getting up from the table and muttering, we'll see, before hitting Spidey in the head with the butt of his rifle. Spider-Man woke up again, but this time he was in the middle of a tropical rainforest. Peter thought to himself, wow, I gotta stop waking up in random places. It was pouring rain, and Peter was struggling to even stand up before he attempted to swing out of the jungle. However, Craven knew that this was a possibility, and implemented an electrical surge in his suit that would trigger if he attempted to go out of bounds in the forested arena. Peter fell to the ground of the thud, and thought out loud that he wasn't going to try that again. Peter started to stumble forward, attempting to escape this jungle maze and this lunatic. As he made his way deeper into the forest, he could see a wall of yellow eyes staring at him, and he stood still for a moment. Just then, two panthers lunged at him, and he flipped into the air. On his way down, he webbed one of their mouths closed and grabbed the other, throwing it into the webbed one. When they were both on the ground, he proceeded to web them up together so that they couldn't get out. However, as he was webbing them, the lion from Oscorp jumped behind him, clawing his back. Peter yelled as his back began to bleed profusely, and he turned just in time to grab the lion's teeth, holding them back as the lion attempted to bite him in half. He then lifted the lion into the air and threw it against a tree while simultaneously webbing it up. Peter fell to the ground, aching in pain and covered in blood. 
However, he knew he needed to stop Craven and that he couldn't give up. Peter then moved towards the center of the jungle, leading himself towards what appeared to be an ancient temple. Standing atop of the stairs leading to it was Craven, who had his rifle slung on his back and combat knife on his side. Craven then proclaimed that Spider-Man was a more skilled combatant than he took him for, and that this fight would be legendary. Spidey then yelled that his hunting fantasy was over. Craven laughed, pulling his rifle over his shoulder and claiming that the fight was to commence now. Craven began firing multiple rounds from his high-powered hunting rifle, which Peter was able to avoid with relative ease, even though his back was completely slashed through. However, a bullet was able to pierce his leg, to which Spider-Man screamed, but shot a web at Craven's face, stunning him and launching himself towards Craven. Craven ripped the web from off his face and pulled out his knife, but had it blocked and kicked by Spider-Man, until the two warriors stood across each other with nothing but their bare hands to fight. Craven flew at Spidey, throwing a flurry of punches and kicks, but Spidey was able to block them and threw a few punches of his own, one of them hitting Craven square in the jaw. Craven reeled back, smiling with bloody teeth before tackling Spidey to the ground. Craven began punching him repeatedly, stunning him longer and longer after every punch. However, Spidey was able to muster enough strength to throw Craven off of him with his legs and began webbing him in the air. Craven then hung to the wall for a moment before breaking out of it with his sheer strength. Craven then grabbed Spider-Man's arm as he was trying to punch him, and he broke it. Spider-Man howled in pain. And this was the moment that Craven knew that he had bested Spider-Man. Peter was laying in pain, wondering how he was going to stop Craven. Craven then put his hands on Peter's neck and began to choke him out. Just as his life was fading before his eyes, Peter heard the loud crack of a rifle, and Craven slumped over on Peter. Peter threw Craven off him to see MJ standing with Craven's rifle in her hand, with special agents surrounding her. MJ remarks that she finally got to save him for once. Peter limps over to her, hugging her and asking her how she had found him. She explained that the suit tracker that Peter developed went off as he was on his way to Russia. Craven had deactivated it, but not before a positive location was determined. She then called some special agent contacts that she had made over the past few years and called in a favor to track Peter. They had told her that they were tracking Craven as well, but that they had never had as strong of a lead as they did now. She continued that while Peter was distracting Craven, they were able to sneak into the facility and take out the guards. Then she heard the screaming and found him in the middle of the forest. Peter remarked that that was quite a story, and that he would always be in debt to her. She smiled, replying that that was what partners were for. Peter and MJ then kiss and head out of the facility. One month later, Peter and MJ are in the delivery room at a hospital, and MJ is holding their newborn son, who they named Harry. Peter then holds Harry in his arms and begins to cry tears of joy. MJ begins to cry as well, and they all hold each other. When they get back home, Peter sits MJ down and explains to her that he is retiring as Spider-Man for a while, so that he can raise Harry the right way, and so that she didn't have to worry about him every day. He further explains that the villains had been taken care of and that the raft was more secure than ever. MJ is relieved to hear those words and brings Harry into his bedroom, which was Peter's old bedroom from his youth. They put Harry to bed, and Peter puts away his suit for the last time. And that's the end of my story. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments below. Would you have wanted to see a Spider-Man 4? Comment that down below as well. If you enjoyed this video, then consider leaving it a like. If you enjoy this style of content and want to see more, then consider subscribing to the channel as I will be doing plenty more videos in the future. Thanks again, and this is the Rewriter writing out.